Thanks for joining me here today at Novel Idea. My name is Dia, and today I would like to do a May wrap up. So I have been doing weekly wrap ups, and so I'm gonna just quickly kind of go through um, the ones that I've already read and told you about and then we'll get to the ones from this week that I haven't said anything about yet. So in total um, for the month of May, <laughs> it keeps getting caught in my lipstick. Um, in total for the month of May, I read 31 books and um, 14 of those were science fiction fantasy uh, six were classics, two were short story collections, uh, one was a play, I read three nonfiction books, um, one general fiction, and two cozy mysteries, and um, three historic fiction. So those were my numbers. And the books were Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor, Exhalation by Ted Chang, Elizabeth and Her German Garden by Elizabeth von Arnhem, uh, Inheritance, The Inheritance, sorry, by Louisa May Alcott, Eight Cousins by Louisa May Alcott, Flower Fables by Louisa May Alcott, <laughs> Under the Lilacs by Louisa May Alcott. Um, A Betrayal in Winter by Daniel Abraham. An Autumn War by Daniel Abraham. Over the Woodward Wall by Deborah Baker. Um, Age of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. Child of the Silent Night by Edith Fisher Hunter. Um, Getting to Know Jesus by George MacDonald, The Summer Tree by Guy Gabriel Kay, Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford, The Ninth Rain by Jen Williams, Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett, um, Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kemmerer, um, Call of the Bone Chips by R.J. Barker, Paradise Lost by John Milton, um, Master of Poisons by Andrea Harriston, or Hairston, <laughs> I do that every time, Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, Named of the Dragon by Susanna Kearsley, Driving Miss Daisy by Alfred Uri, Cruel Candy, A Cozy Quirky Mystery by Mildred Abbott, uh, the Cerulean by Amy Ewing. And then the ones from this week are what I'm gonna go over. I wanted to show you guys really quick. My daughter for um, my birthday uh, sent me this little notebook and it says Dia's book journal. Isn't that sweet? So she sent me that for my birthday. And then inside it has all these little spaces where you can write about the books that you read. So that's what I'm using as we go through these ones this week. Um, so the first one is actually a DNF. Um, I started to read The Bladed Faith and I got about 70% through and I just couldn't <laughs> take the blood and guts and gore, you guys. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Um, this is a very descriptive book. I can handle a little bit of description when it comes to um, dismemberment and torture and, uh, you know, sword fights and weapons and all of that. But, um, yeah, this was a little over the top for me. So this is a revenge story. Uh, it's very vigilante-esque in its revenge. Um, it 
is wars and battles and like I said, dismemberment, torture. Um, there are multiple POVs uh, of good, quote unquote good, and quote unquote evil. Um, it's all action. Um, I don't think it's very character driven. I don't feel that it is anyway. Um, maybe there was some character development in there. I just could not find it beneath all the dead bodies. <laughs> so um, The Blade of Faith by David Dalglish was um, a DNF for me. So the, the next book that I read was A Cozy Mystery because I needed some comfort <laughs> after that. So I read Mana from Hades. And this is by Carola Dunn. And uh, it is a robbery, a murder. It is a, a wrongly accused young person who has an elderly woman with a West Highland Terrier who um, is just there to, to do the right thing and the police are actually, um, one of the police officers is related to the elderly lady. And they're actually the ones that solve everything or do most of the footwork and, and that kind of stuff. But um, she still manages to get in the middle of everything. It was sweet. I really enjoyed it. Um, so if this was an 80% B minus, um, it was more, it, it was less about the mystery and more about this elderly woman and her circle of friends and life. And I enjoyed it. It just wasn't quite a, a mystery, but I'm going to go on in the series. It's, uh, there's at least a couple more books in it and I'm going to go on and read those because it was good enough. And uh, it was definitely a comfort after The Bladed Faith. All right, the next one that I read was um, Aunts Aren't Gentlemen. And this is by P.G. Wodehouse. And it's a Jeeves and Wooster novel. And Wooster um, is told by a doctor that he needs a change of lifestyle. And he has to go to the country and that he needs to go to bed early and not go out drinking with all of his buddies and not be a man about town so to speak and um, in typical Jeeves and Wooster fashion uh, going to the country is not the answer <laughs> so he ends up uh, right smack dab in the middle of well-mannered, highfalutin shenanigans. <laughs> and um, it made me laugh. It was fun. I really enjoyed that one. Um, B plus 87%. Um, the mystery or the, uh, the shenanigans are basically because a cat walks into a stable, a horse stable, and a daughter gets married, which sound very innocuous, but nothing is innocuous when Wooster is around. So, aunts aren't gentlemen, 87% B plus. Okay, the next one was um, Down to Earth by Monty Don. And this is a gardening book. And um, Monty Don writes in a way that you feel like you're just kind of walking through the garden with a friend and you have a cup of coffee and you're just talking and you know, they're imparting wisdom that's what it feels like when you read a Monty Don book. And I'm never disappointed with them, but this one especially was just super um, endearing. 
that. And it might be because I'm missing gardening so much. And he describes so many things and he goes through each month of the year and um, talks about the special quality of each one of those months in the garden. It was just really wonderful. I really, really loved it. And um, it's a nonfiction. I'm not going to give it a grade, but I love the way he writes. So if you ever have a chance to pick up a book by him, specifically ones that are about his gardens, not necessarily gardens of the world or, you know, going off to some garden in France somewhere, but Long Meadow and, um, and his, you know, fork, what is it? Fork to table? No. Earth to fork? Fork? I don't know. Anyway, he has a couple that he's written with his wife. Um, this one down to earth and he's got ones um, where he talks about his dogs but he is also talking about gardening it's just they're wonderful so never be afraid to pick up a Monty Don gardening book they are fabulous um, the next one that I read was Outcast by Rosemary Sutcliffe and this is um, a, a historical fiction. It's about a um, Roman ship that is um, basically torn apart in a storm and washes up off the coast of um, the United Kingdom somewhere. And um, a baby is the only survivor and that baby is found and taken in by a family in the village that is close to where the ship washed ashore or the remains of the ship washed ashore but because he is Roman um, he is never really accepted in the village and uh, so when he comes to a certain age they cast him out, they exile him. And he, at I think the age of 10 or 12, something like that, has to basically make it on his own. And there's a lot of hardship that happens. He's um, not, it, it's not an easy life. And then um, at one point in the story, so it's, it's action, 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 action. And then about halfway, two thirds of the way through, something happens and everything slows down and it kind of becomes a coming of age tale. And I love Rosemary Sutcliffe's writing. Um, I think she does a fabulous job. She writes very lovely stories. Um, this one was not my favorite but it's still a strong B plus. It was an 87% and um, I think it's definitely worth the read if you like historical middle grade YA kind of fiction. Um, okay, so the last book that I finished and I just finished it this morning, but I'm gonna count it for May because I read most of it in May. <laughs> and that is The Deepest Blue. This is by Sarah Beth Durst. It is a tale of Renthea, which um, her she has a series called The Queens of Renthea, right? Queens of Renthea. And um, they are very different from anything else that I've ever read. Um, and this is in the same world, but in a different nation within the world. And so this is, so Renthea is set in a forest. It's all forested lands and everything that is a danger there all has to do with things you would find in forests. 
but the deepest blue is island nations. And so it's um, everything that is a danger in these stories has to do with the water, with the ocean. And um, it was very good. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I will say that I enjoyed the very beginning and the very end much more than the middle. Typical of the Renthea stories, it is violent. Um, it's not violent in the way that the Bladed Faith was violent. It's not super descriptive of the violence and the blood and gore um, and that kind of thing. Uh, it, it describes it, but it doesn't hang out there. Um, so it's, it is violent, but I, um, and I don't enjoy that part of the book so much, but this was a story of, um, a band of sisters, not a band of brothers, a band of sisters, um, in the sense that our main character really finds her strength in bringing people together. And so she um, is always reaching out, always trying to bring others in um, to overcome whatever obstacle it is together. And I loved that. I loved it. It was so beautiful to see a story told about a fem feminine character, a female character who finds strength, not in being a badass and not in all of her scars and not in, you know, wearing pants. <laughs> Although, you know, all of those things probably happen. Um, no, she finds it in being loved and being supported by that love and in friendship and joining arms, locking arms and um, facing a problem as a unit rather than trying to do everything on her own. So I really, really um, felt this book had a beautiful message. Um, the, the story was not, I'm, I was used to, um, everything that was new and different in the Queens of Renthea series. So I was used to, um, the form of magic, uh, that is used in this book. And I was used to who the form, who uses the form of magic and, who it's used against or, or with. And, um, and there were a couple of little new nuances, a little new twists to that, but not new enough or not different enough that it didn't feel like I knew what was going to happen. So, um, it feels though like a very personal story with epic stakes. So it, this is, like I said, a completely new world. Well, a completely new side of this world. And um, so you get this sense that it's much, there, there's much more of the world um, out there. And, uh, I don't think that this will probably be Sarah Beth Durst's last novel in Renthea. I have a feeling that we are going to see another tale of Renthea from her. 
um, because she kind of gives you that that epic um, fantasy feel with with this book, even though this one is shorter than the Queens of Renthea series books are. Okay, you guys, that wraps up my May. That was um, a wonderful reading month. I did not expect to read 31 books. Um, that is not including my DNFs, which um, two of those I read pretty far into before um, giving up on them. So um, I don't, I didn't total my pages or do anything like that, but I'm, I'm very blessed uh, with how my reading month went. Overall, I had lots of A's, A minuses, A plus reads, and that um, makes me very happy. Um, I had a great birthday month. I am a happy camper, uh, an older happy camper. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me for these uh, times where we're talking about what I've read. And um, I would love to know if you read any of these books this month or if you've read them in the past and how you enjoyed them. And so I just wanna have a conversation, you guys. I can't wait to um, get into a rhythm of this with everybody and I just want to thank you for um, watching. Thank you again for coming by and like if you like this, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.